Hello Reds and welcome to Top of the Cop. Now, today's video, we're just going to review the game yesterday. Obviously, Liverpool have strolled to a 4-0 victory against Arsenal uh, after the international break. And all seems well inside the, uh, the club. You know, we're all um, happy with the results. And we move forward now as we uh, look forward to, obviously, you know, Champions League football again uh, next week. So we're going to take a look at the Porto game as well. Uh, but just before we get into today's video, a bit of housekeeping to get business out the way. Uh, if you do like today's video, please hit that like button to help the video out. Subscribe for more LFC related content. We've also got a giveaway at the moment where you can win one of our new hoodies, similar to the one that I'm repping at the moment. This is the away. 93 colorway to be within a chance of winning one of them all you need to do is subscribe to the channel and we'll be picking obviously you know random subscribers out to send some of our hoodies out to if you just want to buy one just go to the site you'll see the link there on the shop you can obviously take a look at all the different colorways we do um, and also twitter instagram give us a follow and with that being said let's get into it reds so yeah, Liverpool strolled to a 4-0 win at Anfield against Arsenal. Um, same old story really when it comes down to Arsenal. You know, I don't think it's a, an actual secret that you know Liverpool have battered Arsenal in recent years really over you know, the majority of the games that we played against each other. Um, Arsenal's downfall, well let's just say Arteta's downfall, is trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liverpool. You know, if West Ham showed Arsenal anything last week, um, they know that obviously if they were if they were if they went toe to toe with Liverpool West Ham last week, it would have been the same type of game. Um, but West Ham had the game plan under David Moyes. Mikel Arteta should have took notes from that. He didn't. And for me, he, he's a very poor manager um, in the same brackets as even Ole. You know, I'm not even I'm not even joking about that. For me, Mikel Arteta doesn't tick all the boxes uh, tactically anyway. And you know, his Arsenal team turned up and got played off the park. They didn't even lay a glove on Liverpool. I think from off the top of my head, I can only remember one attempt by Partey, which Alisson tipped over the bar, making it look effortless as ever, even though it was a decent uh, strike by the Arsenal midfielder. But yeah, Arsenal for me, they needed to come with a bit more than just what they did in the sense of tactic tactics. They were awful and yeah, they got punished for it. So from a Liverpool point of view, um, you know, it took a while for the breakthrough. But we finally got there uh, through obviously a Trent assist and a Mane header. Ramsdale had pulled off a few saves just prior to that. Um, and I was kind of singing his praises. I think he should be, you know, within a shelf of being England's number one. Um he showed that with saves from Thiago, Salah and Mane earlier on and, and obviously Trent as well, the one he tipped over the bar. Um, but he'll be disappointed he didn't uh, tip that round the post. But still, you know, we deserved a goal at that point. Uh, Trent again with another assist um, and, you know, Mane keeping up his goal score and form. And we just kind of controlled the game from start to finish. Let's not, you know, let's not, you know, lie about it you know we did and you know Arteta lost his head didn't he uh, from uh, moaning about a challenge by Mane which was a nothing challenge let's face it but as soon as that happened Liverpool took full control the bit between the teeth he wanted to prove a point you know we went into break with it and you know with a quite deserved 1-0 lead and then second half nothing much changed from Arsenal's point of view so Liverpool just cracked on grinding them down and obviously getting their just rewards Um I feel sorry for the young lad Tavares, the left back for Arsenal. Uh, he, he, he gave her a bit in the week, hadn't he? He was asked about how he felt uh, going up against Mo Salah, and his response was in the, along the lines of, you know, bring it on. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm not even that, just like a proper bring it on. I'm not phased. And, you know, I've got no qualms with the young lad backing himself, but pick your fights, mate. As soon as he played that pass back to Yotta, obviously, uh, Yotta showed great composure. You know, um, putting the defender on his arse and going round the goalkeeper to make it 2 0. After that goal, the young full back had a shocker. Uh, everything he'd done was just <laughs> awful. And, you know, I'm sure he'll learn from that. I'm sure he'll learn from kind of running his mouth across uh, social media about it. And, you know, I'm sure next time he's asked, he won't be so bold and come out with statements as he did. But, you know, at that point in the game, Mo Salah done everything but score. Um, 
the little ball he controlled over the shoulder, his little touches, his awareness, his positional play, um, you know, running the defenders, everything you you know you you expect from Mo Salah in the form that he's in. And then you know it wasn't until a little break with the Otters flick on Mane running down the left and with a sublime you know weak foot cross for him to to tap home and you know fully deserved all three of the uh, strikers getting on the uh, score sheet. So. At that point, you know, we knew then. Even 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 though they hadn't laid the glove on us in recent weeks, we know we we've you know we've been um subject to a few laps in concentration which have let the opposition back in. So at that point, it was it was, you know, it was more comfortable. And you know, Minamino comes on, gets a goal. And you know, I said at the beginning of the season that when Origi, Minamino, and players like that do come in as squad players, we want them to contribute at some point. Uh, you know, and you know, we want them to pick up the odd goal here and there in their performances, so we can rely on them sometimes. And you know, it was great to see Minamino get a goal. And even after that, I know that was his first touch, but after that, he looked lively. Um, so that was great to see. From from a Liverpool point point of view today, I cannot be uh, disappointed too much. From an Arsenal point of view. Their tactics were awful, you know, really were bad. Um, Arteta needs to add something to his game if he wants to be successful because is the magical run out at Arsenal sooner or later if he's going to keep on, you know, bringing up those type of Bielsa performances uh, where he doesn't really, really care about the defensive side of the game, let's just say. But another performance I really want to talk about, Trent Alexander-Arnold, you know, he gets some stick off rival fans for his defensive capabilities and I think what we need to start doing is highlighting when he has a great game defensively. Yesterday, you would have, you wouldn't even have thought that Aubameyang was on the pitch, and you know, uh, yeah, he had uh, the young uh, young kid uh, Emil Smith Rowe uh, fluttering and out of that left side, linking up with Aubameyang, and you know, he, he kept them both relatively quiet, um, and he got two assists. So all those Trent haters can keep on hating, but defensively amazing and offensively as we expect him nowadays. He's just going strength to strength now with his assists in recent weeks for club and country and it's great to see he's starting to get some recognition uh, so hopefully he can keep up his form. And also Fabinho, you know, he, he for me, I've done a few podcasts recently, although he's obviously, you know, really good. He showed a few, you know, he showed his vulnerability getting caught with the ball a few, uh, especially against West Ham. It was great to see him back to his best. Some great challenges, some great bits of play by him. Broke up that midfield, controlled the midfield, especially with Henderson being out, you know, on the bench. It was great to see someone like him stepping up and controlling that midfield. Thiago got, you know, was allowed to play the way he wants to play football. Known Fabinho was behind him and his contribution, you know, was a brilliant passing range unbelievable dictatorship of the game pace unbelievable and you know Ox had a great game in midfield as well obviously he came off towards the end um, because obviously he he obviously blew out his steam so to speak but overall in the midfield and the attacking options I thought we you know we were we were superb on the day and again you know Chimacas shows that was no there is no need to rush Robertson back um, obviously, this is the second little uh, relapse now of his hamstring injury. First time, it was notable that was uh, you know he'd rushed him back. Let's not take those uh, risks this time. We've got you know two home games, Porto on Wednesday, and then we've got Southampton. Just keep uh, Costas in there, let him get a run of games, let Robertson get a good rest that he deserves, and you know Van Dijk, solid as ever, absolutely fantastic, um, great leadership on the pitch. And you know that you know from a whole you know team point of view, I couldn't have been more happy. There was no one who I thought I didn't step up to the plate. Everyone had the bit between the teeth. Obviously, after the West Ham game, you know Arsenal were always going to you know get the backlash of that result. And yeah, for Liverpool point of view, absolutely fantastic. Anyway, if you want to talk about obviously anything in the game that I've kind of missed off, missed off, leave the, uh, your questions in the comments down below. And I'll, you know, I'll interact with them. I'll answer a few questions. But let's move on to Porto on Wednesday night. Now, I'm not even going to... There isn't much to say about this game. Um, me and my son are going. I'm paying you know, quite a bit of money to go to the match. And I would not be asked if they throw out the under-21s. I really wouldn't. I'd be able to enjoy the match. I'd be able to you know, interact with my son a little bit more. It's not so frantic. because we, we we obviously love those big European uh, nights at Anfield when it's in the balance. And, you know, like the Barcelona game, for instance. The atmosphere in, that, in the ground that night was amazing. But I will be happy, happy, happy if I turn up 
on Wednesday night. Tyler Morgan's in the midfield. Origi, Minamino, players like that, you know, are in the squad. You know, get Kanate and Gomez on the bench, even give Keller a chance in goal, you know, in Champions League. I would be more than happy to spend my money, turn up on a cold night at Anfield, sit in the cop and watch the fringe players in some game time because, if, if put it this way, if Salah plays, ma imagine he gets injured and, and he's out for ages. I understand he's going to want to score goals, you know, for the golden boot or whatever, you know, all, all those, you know, individual rewards. I get that. But I don't want to see them in there because if I don't want a circumstance similar to last year when players were playing in needlessless games and then getting injured. So I'd rather see the fringe players get some minutes, keep all the squad fresh, get a win because I really couldn't see Porto beating our second string team, if I'm being honest, and, you know, go into the Southampton game fresh because the group sealed, we finished top. There's no way we can obviously be seeded any better i understand klopp's vision you know a few weeks ago he said like we want to win every game because you know it's a lot of money but i'm not being funny think about how much money we'd lose if the likes of mo salah was injured uh right up to the afcons then he went the afcons and then he wasn't the same and he come back touch wood none of that's going to happen but imagine just for a needless game he was kept on the pitch and some one of the porto defenders like i don't know if pepe's if they're fit now but imagine he's like you know i'm gonna nail him because you know what he's like i just keep those keep our players who are obviously going to be important in um in the future games off the pitch but yeah as i say i'm going the game on um wednesday night uh, if you see me and you see you know come and say hi i'd be more than happy to have a chat with you about the game and stuff um but yeah that's it for today's video as i say the giveaway is i don't know i don't know how long i'm running the giveaway for until i see a substantial like change in numbers whether it be the subscribers or uh, obviously twitter twitter tweets that i've put out there today about it some interaction in that I'll obviously announce uh, further down the line, but yeah, I'm going to give away a few hoodies. Random subscribers will receive them. Um, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel. Hit me up on social media as well if you obviously um, want more information about uh, the giveaway. But yeah, until next time, Reds, take care.